Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a review on a boot that I have long sought after. Um, this is what I consider nothing less than a grail boot. These are the Truman boots in navy horse rump from uh, the horse rump is sourced from the Merriam Tannery in Italy. And let me tell you, from, from the moment I started collecting boots, I've wanted this exact makeup in almost this exact leather. I'll start out by saying, years ago, I had just picked up my first pair of Aldens. I had just started looking at the Vibergs, actually. And I got on the website, and I saw that, oh, they had this really expensive pair of navy shell cordovan Vibergs service boots in a cap toe uh, with gold eyelets, and they were, they were just gorgeous. I thought, ah, th those are really expensive. They were over $1,000, and uh, th that, was, that was really a lot for me. And I thought, uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait on that. I'll sit on that for a while. Well, the next morning, they were, <laughs> I looked at them on the website, and they were all sold out. I was like, what is going on? Well, you know, yesterday they were, they were fully stocked, and now today they're just completely sold out. Well, that was back in 2013, and it wouldn't be <laughs> almost another five years till I had the opportunity to get my hands on something similar. Uh, Truman started a crowdfunding campaign for these. Basically, he hadn't ordered the leather yet. In order to get these boots, a certain threshold had to be met. So basically, I, I don't know, what, whatever Vince determined, maybe 10 pairs, maybe 15 pairs had to be had to be ordered and already paid for in order for him to go ahead, order the leather from Italy, bring it in, and then build the boots from there. When I saw that he was doing the color navy, I said, yep, take my money. <laughs> it was really cool. He actually, on his website, he let you track the progress of the crowdfunding, and this and the whiskey color, um, they, they were both almost half funded by the time I decided to go ahead and and go in to fund these. I put in for these, and it wasn't long after that that they became fully funded. So I was really excited to know that I was getting these. Like like I talked about before, these these poor guys didn't end up getting crowdfunded the Color 85. <laughs> that was in a plain toe. These, as you can see, have a cap toe. I talked about that in my review on these. But despite not getting crowdfunded, he went ahead and did a run of these anyways, which I was which I was really happy about. And I got the confirmation email, you know, congratulations, these are getting funded. I think it took about two and a half months. I think I put in for it in sometime in August maybe, and I got them sometime in October, so so pretty quick. I was pretty I was really happy with how fast it came. I've just I've just been enjoying these ever ever since. Alright, so here we go. Gonna make this brief because uh like most of my videos, it's 15 degrees outside, but here we go. You can get a shot of these in the nice morning light. You can see the, the pucker here. This is their Blake, their Blake Welt. Blake Welt stitching. Very cool. There we go, there's some of the belt there. This goes perfectly with those. So the only thing that's that's a little off here, you'll notice, is obviously the hardware. So I got gold, gold nylets on the boots, and copper hardware on the belt. But aside from that, I think these two shades of navy, got those teardrop eyelets there, which are cool. But yeah, check that out. That's uh, that's a winning combination if I've ever seen one myself. Yeah. So, so yeah, the the hardware mismatch doesn't that does not bother me in the least. Yeah, that's not that's not something that I think has to has to match. So a little bit about these. These are actually on what's called a Blake welt. And I had to research that a little bit because I'm used to the Goodyear welt or the stitch down welt. I'll get closer so you can see, but basically these are on a stitch down welt and these are on the Blake welt. So let me get closer so you can kind of compare those. All right, yeah, so you can see the toe on the Color 85s. That's the double stitch down welt. And then you can compare that to the toe on these and see how there's almost like a lip on the navy ones, almost like a pucker going on. 
And, and notice how on this one it doesn't have that. I think that's characteristic of the Blake weld. So again, I'll turn it to the side. You can see how the lip on the Navy one kind of puckers out, whereas whereas the uh, the, the color 85 it, it, it it's kind of straight flat down. So that's one difference. Um, the other difference is going to be so the color 85 has a heel cap, whereas the Navy does not have the heel cap. Let's see if you can get that. I talked about before how, Vin, how Vince adopted a newer model of making boots, but um, it turns out I wasn't completely accurate in that because as you can see, these are basically completely two different models. The height's about the same on those, and, and they, they, both have, they both have cap toes, but honestly, they, they look like two completely different shapes. Maybe it's just from my angle. But yeah, this, yeah, I, b I believe they both have golden eyelets, which I love. Yeah, they both have the Dianite soles going on. Both are just, you know, fantastic makeups. I love both, but I, I'm really fortunate to have both. So anyways, I'll show, so I've worn these navy ones 12 times so far. I've, I've been wearing them a lot to get them really broken in into the rotation. But I just kind of want to show some of the wear that's happening here. All right, so I just wanted to get a video of these natural light so that you can see what I'm talking about in terms of the leather sort of lightening up there. See that? See those nice scuffs that are forming? There we go. On the heel there. Okay, here we go. That's what I'm talking about with the Blake welt. You could kind of see in there. Some more along there. All right now for the other one. It's also worth mentioning. You probably see it in some of the pictures, but uh, Vince included two different pairs of rawhide laces with these boots. One one of them is sort of a more orangish type. And the other one are these these brown ones. I love them both. I've used both. I don't know which one I'm going to keep on there yet. Probably just keep alternating between the two depending on how I feel. Yeah, there you go. You can see the Blake stitching in there. Pretty well defined in there. Yeah, you could you could see it there, sort of like the uh, those grooves in there. That's that's a good example of of what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll read I'll read a little bit about Blake Construction here. The Heddle's website, which is really good for denim enthusiasts, but th they have a lot of good good information on there as well. So it says for the Blake Construction. In terms of both structure and aesthetic, it's a little bit more removed than the Goodyear and Storm welts. In fact, a shoe made using Blake construction goes without a welt altogether. It simply uses a single channeled stitch running straight from the outsole through to the interior to hold the different elements of the shoe together. Blake construction has become less common in hard wearing boots due to the tendency for moisture to wick its way through the Blake stitch and into the shoe under heavy weather conditions. A benefit of the Blake stitch, however, is the low and more elegant profile that shoemakers can achieve and the added lightness and flexibility of the shoe due to the omission of the traditional welt and midsole. I do agree, these are really light. Now, I've worn these in the rain and I got no wetness in there. So I, I don't know if I agree fully with that, but I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know as time goes on for sure. It seems to be just as easily recrafted Resolable as a Goodyear weld, probably easier. I did want to. I did want to leave a special call out to uh, Kevin Wells. He commented on my on my color eighty five review. He offered some insight because I was a little bit confused between horse rump leather and shell cord of on, and I should have known this. It's kind of embarrassing actually. So he says horse rump, like these boots, is a hide leather made from the skin directly above the shell cord of on. So uh, directly above the cordovan shells. So basically, this is the, the layer above the shell cordovan. The shell cordovan is a membrane located beneath the outer skin. So yeah, shell cordovan isn't technically a leather. 
And that's what he talks about here. He says, shell is not actually a skin leather, but instead made from the subcutaneous muscular tissue called paniculus carnosus that lies beneath the skin on the rump of the horse. It's a muscle, oh, this is really cool. It's a muscle that allows them to shiver their hide to shake off flies. Humans have the same type of muscles, but in our face and neck. Some animals have it along with their whole, uh, along their whole back. That's partly why it has seemingly magical properties other leathers don't. It literally doesn't have pores. Normal horse hide will have pores and grain to it, like other animal leathers. Okay, and that, that kind of makes sense. It kind of resonates with why I was saying, you know, if somebody told me that this was calf skin or cow skin, I would believe them because it kind of has that same, same sort of feel and property going on. The rump leather is called out in particular because while it's not shell, it's some of the thickest and most durable leather on the hide. Okay, well, thank you, sir. That is so well articulated. I couldn't have done that better myself. You're the man, thank you. So he says he's also a fan of the Sedgwick bridle leathers that I'm just about to talk, to, talk about. So yeah, uh, yeah, Kevin Wells, you're the man. All right. <laughs> oh, and also he asked who makes my gloves. Well, I got those gloves from J. Crew uh, a couple years ago on sale because I'm cheap like that. All right, so anyways, um, I've talked a lot about belt pairing with boots. And this is another one of those stars aligned moments. It's so weird that right after I got my green Sedgwick English bridle leather belt, that I got these color 85 boots that match them almost perfectly. Well, it wasn't long after these dropped on the, that, that, I, that I received these. Isaac at Pigeon Tree Crafting, he. <laughs> He put that up on his Instagram. And it literally, the thought process that it took for me to say, okay, consider it and then buy it, it was probably the shortest ever. It was literally like three seconds. This is English bridal leather. This is the Sedgwick belt from Pigeon Tree Crafting. And it's got a copper quick release buckle there which, again, fantastic mechanism. Just how, just how brilliantly those match. So thank you, Isaac. I'm loving this thing. Um, I know some of my other buddies on Instagram got this one, and all I can say is, dudes, you guys are gonna be so stoked when you start pairing this up with your navy boots. Oh, once again, I don't believe that you necessarily need a navy colored belt to pair with navy boots. I've been wearing navy colored boots for going on five years now, never had a navy colored belt. <laughs> this is my first one, I'm really excited to have it. Just look at how perfectly that matches up with that, I mean come on, come on. You're going to be killing it with this combination. I'm also going to be rocking this with my, uh, with my Alden tanker boots and navy chrome XL leather. have the mock toe. Those are basically an indie boot. I do wear those with a suit on occasion, but these I feel are a lot more formal and, and can pull off a more formal range than the, than the tanker boots can. In terms of what I'm what I plan to wear these with, I am gonna kind of consider this sort of a dress boot, although I have been wearing it with, I have been wearing these with just denims and a t-shirt. I'm not afraid to mix this navy with dark denim or light denim. I'm not afraid to mix this with really any color, even if it's a navy colored fabric that, that would not deter me. I think these look absolutely fabulous with, with a pair of dark denims. I, I kind of like the, the <laughs> I know I talk a lot about how I like contrast, but I also like a non-contrast. Sometimes I enjoy deliberately matching things that are close in color. I, I don't know, sometimes I'm just in that mood and sometimes it just, it seems ironic, or it just seems kind of cool to, to match, you know, match those with denims. Even though I have brown shoes that would look very safe with the denims, I mean, throw those on with a pair of selvage, who's gonna, who's gonna stop you? <laughs> this is a makeup that I've long considered basically, you know, the creme de la creme of boots. This to me is a true grail boot. Th this is what I consider an achievement. Like I said, it took me five years. 
I stalked the Viber web website to see if they were ever going to do another run of the Navy Shell Cordovan. They never did. They never did. Not since 2013. Not from my watching. But yeah, it's just it's just been a long time coming for these. And this is one of those pairs that I always just had in the back of my mind, but knew there probably wasn't going to be a good chance I would ever get to get these. You know, this type of thing doesn't come around every day. But anyways, this has been my initial review of these. I plan to do follow-up reviews as, as time goes on. I hope I did these justice. I'm on Instagram. You can see, you can watch kind of the evolution of these, how I've worn these, how I will continue to wear these through time. And uh, I appreciate you watching the video, and I'll see you in my next review.